Hey guys, it's Nancy Tran, registered dental hygienist and birth senior ambassador. Have you guys ever wondered if it's just you or if any other dental colleagues are experiencing fatigue by the end of the workday, especially during this pandemic and wearing all this extra PPE that we're not used to? So the purpose of this segment is to help us better understand and dive a little bit deeper so that we can help manage these physiological changes that our bodies are experiencing. So as we all know, wearing an N95 mask has several implications on how we breathe, especially if it's implied on prolonged use, which is over an hour, heavier workloads, and of course, having to wear an overlying surgical mask over our N95 so that we can preserve the duration and the quality of the N95 since they're harder to get a hold of. So when we are wearing our N95s, that actually increases our respirations one, because we're either experiencing anxiety or we're just not used to wearing the N95s on a typical work day. So we wanna be able to have a better understanding of how our body is affected by our breathing and how the oxygen exchanges are happening and then how we can manage it and do different exercises during the day so that we can build better respiratory lung function and manage these new norms in dentistry. Let's talk about what it feels like to wear our N95, what our body experiences, and what we're going through. So when we are wearing our N95 masks, there is definitely a reduction of airflow because we are breathing more. We find ourselves with increased respirations, and when there's increased respirations, we put ourselves at risk for not allowing our body to process the carbon dioxide that we're exhaling and inhaling so that we can convert that into oxygen for um, what our blood cells and our organs need. So our breathing utilizes chemical processes in order to convert the inhaled carbon dioxide into blood oxygen um, saturation to deliver oxygen to our blood cells and our organs. Uh, when we are doing nasal breathing, and that's why it's important, nasal breathing actually produces nitric oxide, which helps this process. When we are mouth breathing and wearing the N95s, we're not producing nitric oxide, which actually puts our um, body into a deprivation mode. When we are mouth breathing and inhaling and exhaling through our mouth, that just fills our lungs with a physiological dead space. And going into further detail, physiological dead space is pretty much filling up your air with lungs and that air is not being utilized or processed at all. It's just holding dead space. When we do our inhaling and exhaling properly, through our nose, the nitric oxide and the carbon dioxide process actually reaches down to the alveoli sac of our lungs to actually work into that chemical um, gas exchange. So that's why it's really important to help determine and manage our breathing, um, especially while at work and being more conscious so that we're not experiencing these symptoms of fatigue and lightheadedness and just low energy. Um, this is the new norm, but it doesn't have to be that way forever. The whole purpose of this segment is to break it down for us so that we can help um, strength train um, our lungs and our respiratory muscles and it's pretty much the same thing as high altitude training. Um, we can reap the benefits of it so that we can have an overall better overall health and then we'll be able to last longer in dentistry and start to love and enjoy it again. So looking at some stats, when we are wearing our N95, the inhaled amount of carbon dioxide is three to 4% when on average, it's only supposed to be 0.4%. So that's a big difference um, compared to the norms. Our inhaled oxygen um, that we're inhaling is 17%, so it's actually reduced compared to the normal. Um, normal inhaled oxygen should be around 21%. Um, so that's just the variations of the different research studies that I've read, and we'll uh, link several different uh, links in the description box so you guys can read into further detail. There's also going to be a very important chart that I want you guys to review too. It actually compared the different um, implications of us wearing N95s, uh, the different types and what wearing an overlying surgical mask can do in reducing our, uh, our air input and output and how that affects our body. 
let's set some goals to help us manage and maintain the new norm so that we can work in um, strength training, uh, long-term function, and to be able to manage uh, working with the N95s and all this new PPE. So first things first is we want to focus on a breathing exercise regimen, breath training, um, managing a healthier diet, different things that we eat and drink um, will affect our CO2 input and output. And then also being able to commit and focus on caring for yourself, taking time to drink more water throughout your workday, taking time to get fresh air. Most importantly, also managing your, your oxygen saturation throughout the day. So there's different things that I came across and I've tried and I actually like it because it just brought to my attention that I have weak respiratory muscles. Marie Kasem, Kalsem, she is a fellow birth ambassador. Her father is a respiratory therapist, so I reached out to them and kind of worked with them on getting some techniques and recommendations on how we can actually work on strength training our respiratory muscles. especially during this COVID time, he recommended a spirometer. A spirometer is actually going to help build your lung function, especially on inhalation. And this is to be done two times a day with 10 reps. And it, it's kind of unique because the instructions comes with a little chart for you to kind of track your progress. And then on the inside, it gives you a chart based on male or female, your height and your age, and that gives you your vol volumetric dosage that you should be um, capable of breathing to. And with me um, breathing into it, that just really brought to my attention that I'm not where I need to be with my lung function. So that's definitely something that I've been working on. You take the piece here and you do deep, you do a deep breath and you exhale and then you inhale and on your inhale you're supposed to keep this between the better and best and try to get this all the way up to the number that you are supposed to be at Um, the other device that I found, um, because this is a little big and I don't imagine us bringing this to work or in the office, I found um, smaller compact exercising devices. So we have the IsoBreathe. Uh, this is a lung exerciser and it helps build resistance um, and you're you breathe in and you breathe out to help uh, enhance your muscle strength and your stamina. So this is for uh, athletes and anyone who just wants to build endurance with their breathing. First time users, you're actually going to loosen it all the way up to where this is actually the loosest on the last screw. And then your resistance should be all the way to where that is open. So you're gonna put your mouth on here. This one, unlike the breather, you do 25 times, two times a day. Um, the first time that you do the resistance, if you have it on the lowest, the least resistance and you feel like it's too easy, they actually uh, suggest that you adjust it until you feel the first sign of resistance without it being too much exertion. So you do this two times a day 
25 times and they have adjustable knobs so that you work on your resistance and that pretty much allows you to unscrew it to the least resistance and every two weeks you are supposed to tighten it so that you actually work on your lung function. It's pretty unique and you can bring it to work, put in your work bag and work on this uh, during your downtime and that helps. The last one is the breather. Um, this one actually has a lot of research and clinical backing. It also comes with an app to help you track your progress and a lot of videos and tutorials, um, especially during COVID time. Um, they have a section on their website that actually helps with different exercises that you can do with this if you were uh, diagnosed with COVID. This one works on adjusting your inhalation and your exhalation, and then also patients who have had stroke or speech therapy, or they even have weak um, lip and cheek muscles. This helps with building that too. So I kind of liked how this was just like an overall um, one size fits all, and it works on different therapies as well. I set the inhale and the exhale dial on one, the simplest one and of course I probably won't feel too much resistance with that um, so after this week I'm actually going to adjust it to two um, on both sides but you can actually adjust them differently they don't have to match each um, the numbers on each side don't have to match so if you are stronger at exhaling you can actually build a stronger resistance on one side and if you want to work on your inhaling which is weaker then you can adjust that um, it does come with two mouthpieces because not everyone can actually get their mouth around the standard one um, the other mouthpiece is a 15 to 22 millimeter um, device for people who um, have weaker lip muscles and it'll probably work better to create a better seal on um, the other mouthpiece. So typically you're just gonna So you're gonna do this two times a day, 10 times each time. Last but not least is the pulse oximeter. Pulse oximeter is very important, especially throughout the work day when you're wearing your N95 to monitor your oxygen saturation levels. Oxygen saturation levels is pretty much the amount of oxygen that we have in our blood that's delivering the oxygen to our cells. So ideally you want to be 94 and above. Anything lower than 94 is not good. That means that you are experiencing or at, at risk for hypoxia. Um, it also gives you your pulse rate as well. This one here is by Wellview. I like this one because it comes with an app and you can manage it and track it throughout the day. So 98%, that's pretty good. And pulse rate, 92. So what I do is when I take this off, it will register in my phone app and then I can track my progress throughout the work week. Diet, let's talk about diet. So your diet that will help reduce your CO2 output, um, especially during the work day, you want to focus on a low carb diet, high fat intake and higher fiber. So your body actually metabolizes carbohydrates and that causes you to have more carbon dioxide output. When you eat fattier, healthier fats and higher fiber content, that actually reduces your CO2 output. So this is something that is very important, especially if you want to have a lighter meal throughout the day so that you have more energy. Making sure you drink adequate amounts of water um, that's probably the worst habit that I have is remembering to drink water even though it's there. That's very important in order for us to have that oxygen exchange process without adequate amounts of water, taking time to go get fresh air. Um, these are little things that our body needs and we have to make sure our body is getting it. Okay, so let's talk about Breath training. Breath training actually increases the oxygen in our blood via slow and deep breaths. This 
is the best part is because it's free. You do it two times a day, and the two ones that I'm gonna recommend are the purse lip breathing and the um, belly and diaphragm breathing. Okay, purse lip breathing. You are going to relax your shoulders, your back, your neck, and then you're gonna inhale through your nose for two seconds and hold it. And then you're actually gonna exhale slowly through your mouth and this is gonna take longer than it took for you to breathe in. So this is gonna help blow all the air out of your lungs and then repeat it for several minutes. That's an example of the purse lip breathing technique. The next one is gonna be the belly breathing. The main part of the belly breathing is you wanna focus on getting the air through your belly. So you're not gonna use your cheeks to blow out. You're gonna do the same thing. You can sit or lay down, hands on your belly, and slowly breathe in through your nose and fill your stomach with air. And slowly blow out with purse lip. You're gonna repeat this for several minutes too. The only difference between this and the purse lip is this one you're actually focusing on filling all of your um, stomach with the air. That works on abdominal muscles too. So if you're looking to get some abs, that works too. So you want to be able to feel your rib cage actually go in when you're filling your body with air too. So these are just simple exercises that can help build your endurance. And I just hope that this is a fun segment that kind of helps bring to light what your body is going through during this time, especially returning um, to the dental offices post COVID during this pandemic and how we can manage our PPE, have a better work day and reap the benefits because um, Sometimes we don't even realize how bad of shape we are until we actually try these different exercises to see how easily winded or uh, what kind of shortness of breath that we have or what we're experiencing so that we can focus and work on better um, overall health for ourselves and for our patients. Thank you so much. If y'all have any questions, feel free to drop a comment. Hope this helps. You guys have been wonderful and stay safe out there and good luck. Welcome back to seeing patients.